Hi everyone, Sean and Saria with Reality Forge. In this video, we're going to be looking at Nanite Tessellation. We'll bring in a landscape from Gaia, set up some materials on it, and learn how to activate tessellation on a Nanite landscape. If you're going to be practicing Gaia as well and not using the files we provide, you can download the Community Edition for Gaia 1.0 from quadspinner.com. Once Gaia opens up, you want to click on this button on the right of Crater and choose Collapsed Crater. Once the template opens up, to keep things simple and beginner friendly, we're just going to export this as is. So right click on wizard and choose mark for export, then click on build, and you want to change the file format from TIFF to R16. Set the range to raw, and you want to change this resolution from 2048 to an Unreal Valid resolution, which is at the bottom of this list. Do remember to set this to 1009 if you are using the community edition as that's locked at 1K. Let's make this landscape a little smaller now. So we're right clicking on the height and clicking on this downward pointing arrow twice. You're going to repeat this process for the width as well. Take note of your height, your width and your resolution. We're going to need these three numbers when we go into Unreal. After you've specified an output directory, click on start build and then it'll say build complete once it's done. Go ahead and launch Unreal Engine 5.4 and as always, we're going to be using the third person template. I'm going to name this project VDB Crash. Once Unreal starts, click on File, New Level, Basic, and then click on Create. Let's save this level by clicking on this floppy icon, right click and make a new folder, call this folder Maps, and inside this folder, I'm just going to name this Crash. Next, delete the default floor and change your editor mode to Landscape. Next, choose Import from File, and in the Height Map File section, specify the wizard R16 file that you built out from Gaia. Before importing your landscape, we're going to use those three important numbers from Gaia to make some changes. So for the X and Y, it's going to be 100, multiplied by the width, divide by the resolution. For the height, it's going to be 100, multiplied by the height, divide by 512. Let's move our landscape a little higher, and I like to do this in one of the four orthographic views. So click on this button in your viewport. I'm going to choose this view, and let's move our landscape slightly higher. After you're done with this, you can head back to the perspective view and click on import to finally bring your landscape in. If everything is correct, you should now see the same landscape you saw in Gaia in Unreal Engine. Next, I'm going to open Quixel Bridge because we're going to be using the mega scans for our landscape material. When looking for a mega scan, I highly recommend using collections. That way, your mega scans, because they were captured in the same area, really fit in together with one another. I'm going to be using the Utah collection because I'm going for this red Martian environment. You can, by the way, also find a mega scan that you're looking for by putting in its ID. IDs of all mega scans used will be in the description of this video. So I'm going to download this mega scan at the highest quality, which is an 8K texture. And this is going to be for our less rocky, more sandy zones uh, on our landscape. The second mega scan we're going to get is this Western ground mud course 01, once again at the highest quality for the more rocky zones on our landscape. Once that's done, open your content browser, navigate back to your content folder, right click and make a new folder here and name this one materials. Double click to enter this folder and then right click and create a new material. We're going to prefix this with an M underscore, so M underscore landscape. Double click to open your material and the first thing we're going to do is click on the domain and make sure this checkbox, use material attributes is set to true. Then we're going to use a blend material attributes node that is basically going to do all the work for us. It's going to blend between A and B based off an alpha. Now, because both A and B need to be material attribute sets, we're going to use the set material attribute node to construct our first set. Let's go back to the Megascans folder, then surfaces, then canyon rocky ground. And here you can see Quixel has given us three sets of textures. One is a base color, one is a normal, and one is this ORDP. The ORDP texture has different information on every channel. So red is occlusion, green is roughness, and blue is displacement. So next what we have to do is add these channels to our set material attributes node by clicking on this plus over here. So I've just added a base color. We'll now add a normal from the drop down menu and we're going to add ambient occlusion followed by roughness. So just plug the red in here, followed by roughness. Roughness is on green, so we just plug in the green here. And finally displacement, which is going to be driven by the blue channel. For the output of this set material attributes, I'm going to drag rightwards and add a name reroute. Name reroutes are a great way to keep your graph really clean because now you can give this any name like we're giving it Quixel Canyon Rocky Ground. And then I can use that, I can call that at any other point in my graph, giving us access to this material attributes that we just set up. For the second material attribute set, I'm just going to control C on this node, control V, and then repeat the process once again for the other Quixel Megascan. 
Once again, at the end of this process, we're going to add a name reroute, and this one's going to be called Quixel Desert Western Mud. So to bring all this together, now when you right click, you'll see two options under name reroute. So the Quixel Canyon Rocky Ground is going to go to A, and the Desert Western Mud is going to go to B. Just like on a LERP note, the alpha pin here is using black and white to blend between A and B. So I've got this very simple checker texture plugged in here to show those of you that may be unfamiliar or not understand what's going on, how the black and white is defining which texture is being shown. So for that black and white information, I'm going to use a slope mask because I want the material to change as the landscape becomes more vertical. So for our slope angle, I'm going to use a constant three vector with one on the Z. For the fall of power and cheap contrast, I'm going to promote both of these to a parameter. The reason for this is when we make an instance of this master landscape material, I can then make changes to both these values without having to recompile the material every time I make a change. Remember to set the default values at 0.5. I'm now going to right click on my master material and choose create material instance and name this mi underscore landscape. To use this material instance on your landscape, simply select the landscape and in the landscape material slot, select the material instance we just created. Now, because this is a material instance, we can double click and overwrite any parameters we set up earlier. So I'm going to click on these two check boxes here and set the contrast to five and the fall off to 10. And you can see that slope mask now working. It's blending between both materials. At a distance, it's not going to be very noticeable, but if you get really close, you'll see the styling issue on your landscape. To remedy this, we're going to open the M underscore landscape master material and put down a landscape coordinates node. As we did before, we're going to connect the output of this to a named reroute, which is going to be landscape coordinates output. Finally, after selecting the landscape coordinates node, we're going to change the scale on the left to a value of 100. Find the named reroute for the landscape coordinates output and connect this to all the UV pins on all the textures being used in your material attribute sets. After you apply and save, you notice your texture appears larger. That's because it's being scaled more. This is a very beginner friendly way of remedying the tiling problem. For nanite displacement to work, navigate to where your project is saved, go into config and open default engine.ini with something like notepad. You're looking for a section that says renderer settings. Navigate to the end of the section and at the end here, you want to add r.nanite allow tessellation equals one r.nanite.tessellation equals one. Once Unreal restarts with these new settings, you want to open your M underscore landscape master material and search for tessellation on the left side and enable it. The final step in all of this is select your landscape, enable Nanite, and then the buttons above this, there's two buttons above this, you want to click on build data. After the build completes, you can zoom into your landscape and you can see all that displacement being driven by those maps that we plugged into our material attributes earlier. And I've just gone in and turned on nanite triangles and you can actually see that it's physically displacing the terrain here. Now you can also use this with landscape painting. So I'm gonna download this Quixel Mud Dye Tracks texture and then open my master landscape material. So I'm gonna speed this section of the video up. We're basically repeating what we did earlier. Take the three Mud Dye Tracks textures plug them into a set material attributes and give it a named readout. For the UVs, we're going to change things up. We're going to use the landscape coordinates output, but plug it into a multiply node. So we can change the tiling of only a mud tire tracks texture. So we're multiplying this with a constant. I'm also going to promote this to a parameter and name it mud tiling. Don't forget to set the default value to one. Next, we have to set up our landscape layers that we're going to paint on. So I'm going to add a landscape layer blend node and then add two layers here. On the left, we can give our layers names. So I'm going to name the upper layer auto slope mask because this is being driven by that slope mask we have set up. And the layer underneath this, I'm going to name mud tracks. Now we can plug the output from our layer blend to the material attributes, the output from our slope mask blend to the layer with the slope mask blend, and the output from the mud tire tracks, the named readout, to the mud tracks layer. When you return to your landscape after clicking apply, you'll notice it'll be completely black, that's okay. Select your landscape and clear the material on the landscape by clicking on this arrow over here. After the material has been cleared, I'm going to go ahead and select the same material instance and reassign it. After that's done, head back into landscape mode and on the left, you're looking for the paint tab. You'll see both your layers here, but you cannot paint with them. You will need to create a weight blended layer. Do this for as many layers as you have and then save all of them. Final step in all of this is clicking the rebuild data button. You'll find this just above the checkbox where you enabled Nanite on your landscape. After the build is complete, you can simply select your layer and paint with it. It's really nice seeing all that displacement work so well. You can go ahead and change some of the settings on the left here. Shift is erase, and you can also take down the magnitude for a subtle blend between both your textures. 
I then wanted to add a car to my scene, so I downloaded this 1987 Jeep Wrangler from the Wired Wheels Club. Uh, navigate to the FBX folder, drag and drop that into your content browser, and then just use the default settings and then click import all. Now shift select all the light blue static meshes, and then just drag and drop them into the scene. I scaled my car up a little bit, so value of eight here. And then after you've placed your car, you can just go ahead and paint some of these mud tracks into your landscape. Because we set up a way to change the tiling on our mud texture, I'm just going to open my material instance and set the mud tiling to a value of four. You now know how to use nanite tessellation on your landscapes. The same principles are also going to work if you apply these materials to a static mesh. You just have to go ahead and activate nanite tessellation the way we did in this video. With that, everyone, give us a like, give us a sub, let us know in the comments what you thought of this video, and I will see you in the next one.